For those interested in the great unknown beyond our little corner in the universe, the concept of space travel can be equally exciting and frustrating. The universe is just, well, so massive that it's hard to even comprehend the amount of time it would take just to travel the distance between us and our nearest solar system. But as someone who is eager to see what surprises may be out there, I thought it would be fun to explore how close we are to intergalactic space travel. In this video, we explore the future of intergalactic space travel by answering the questions, how far have we gone? What are the setbacks? What technology is being developed to help us go further? Where would we go? And what are our next steps? Before we start, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future sci-fives. Let's begin. How far have we gone? When it comes to technology, we're actually able to go pretty far in relativity to where humans have been. In terms of the size of the universe, it's more than likely that it is physically impossible that we will ever be able to travel outside of our own supercluster of galaxies, as galaxies are moving away from us faster than we can travel. But that doesn't mean it's all bad news. The Voyager 1 space probe was launched by NASA on September 5th, 1977. As of August 25th, 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to cross the heliopause and enter interstellar space. Interstellar space is the medium between solar systems, so basically, as of now, we have been able to send technology outside our solar system, and it only took just over 40 years. Currently, Voyager 1 is the farthest human-made object from Earth. 16 days after Voyager 1 was launched, its twin Voyager 2 was sent off into space as well. On November 5th, 2018, it became the second human-made object to enter interstellar space. Voyager 2 took a little longer as its trajectory included a path that made it the only spacecraft that we know of to have visited Uranus and Neptune. Both crafts took a route that provided encounters with Saturn and Jupiter. And for that, we've gathered some incredible data on our solar system and are now collecting data about interstellar plasma. The Voyagers are expected to lose contact with Earth in the mid-2020s. However, if they go undisturbed for, say, 296,000 years, Voyager 2 is expected to cross paths with the famous star Sirius at a distance of 4.3 light years away, which is pretty incredible considering that it is carrying the golden record containing samples of music, language, and information about, well, humans. But speaking of humans, how far have we actually traveled in space with, you know, us actually on board? Currently, the farthest we have been in the flesh is the dark side of the moon. Before we landed on the moon, we had to do a few prep trips. The first to go was the Apollo 8 trip. Launched on December 21st, 1968, the Apollo 8 mission brought three astronauts to the moon and had them orbit around it and return. This mission brought the first image of an Earth rise. Less than a year later, on May 18th, 1969, the Apollo 10 mission, known as the dress rehearsal for the moon landing, sent three more astronauts to orbit the moon and do a mock practice landing. This meant they descended to 15.6 kilometers above the moon's surface. So far, that is as far as we've gone, and it's a distance we haven't gone in 50 years, let alone any further. But what's holding us back from going further? Let's move on to part two. What are the setbacks? Perhaps the biggest setback when it comes to space travel is just the sheer massiveness of the universe. Just getting to our own moon takes about three days with our current technology. Getting to Mars will take about seven months, and going to the edge of our solar system, all the way to Pluto, would take about nine and a half years. But let's jump out of our solar system. Our galaxy, which we all know as the Milky Way, is about 100,000 light years in diameter. Keep in mind, one light year is roughly nine and a half trillion kilometers. Just trying to imagine that amount of space is a ridiculous concept, then think of traveling it. Even at light speed, that would take, you guessed it, 100,000 years to travel. But that doesn't rule out intergalactic travel, it just means we will likely stay in our own vicinity, which is still massive. So aside from pure space and distance, what other setbacks are we looking at when it comes to, say, visiting the Jovian moon system, or perhaps even our neighboring solar system? As you know, we have sent probes outside of the solar system, so why not humans? One of the biggest technical issues we face is propulsion. As of today, we haven't quite figured out how to develop an engine that doesn't depend on a reaction mass to accelerate. In other words, fuel of a kind. The more mass you require, the more fuel you need. If we have humans in the cargo, they need places to sleep, work, and exercise, which adds a lot of mass to the craft. Until we can develop an engine that doesn't need a reaction mass, we have a bit of a problem on our hands. But speaking of mass, when humans are aboard, scientists don't just have to account for space for them to do human things. They also have to account for supplies, such as food and water. 
As many of you probably already know, to combat the issue of limited water in space, astronauts aboard the ISS filter their urine through two different filtration systems and then reuse the water. Food, however, is a more finite supply. There is no filtering in that case. And as far as we know, there is no place to stop off at and fill up on food supplies, which means we'd be packing for the whole trip. That's a lot of mass. Lastly, another issue that needs to be seriously considered is the effect of space on the human body. Space radiation is very dangerous, and outside of Earth's atmosphere, there's plenty of it. This means high risks of developing cancers, cataracts, and maybe even Alzheimer's. Aside from that, zero gravity will ruin your body. Certain immune cells won't be able to do their jobs, red blood cells are susceptible to explosions, your heart won't work properly, and you risk kidney stones, among other things. If you want to learn more about the human body in space, you can check out my video, What Happens to Your Body in Space. But let's stop pining over the setbacks, and let's look into the technology that is being developed to make up for them. What technology is being developed to help us go further? Remember that issue we talked about when it comes to propelling spacecrafts? Well, there may be an answer on the way, and that is solar sails. Solar sails are kind of exactly what they sound like. Just like a sail would work by having wind push it from behind and propel it forward, a solar sail would work by having light beams push it from behind and propel it forward. As of now, the technology is being looked at as a way to power thousands of probes that would make their way across our galaxy. The sails would be guided by nearly a billion laser beams shot and directed at them from Earth. After just a few minutes of the laser propulsion, the sails would be traveling at one-fifth the speed of light, and once into the vacuum that is space, they would be able to glide the rest of their journey. The probes that this technology is focused on would be able to reach Proxima b, a planet roughly 4.2 light years away. The research and development of this technology is part of a project named Breakthrough Starshot. Breakthrough Starshot is a program that was started by the late Stephen Hawking, as well as physicist and venture capitalist Gary Milner. Also on board is Mark Zuckerberg. Near-Earth asteroid scout and solar sail expert Les Johnson, who works on the project, told National Geographic in the March 2019 edition that these solar sails are the grandparents of the beamed energy sails that will one day take our children to the stars. Okay, so we're on to something when it comes to fixing the issue of fueled propulsion. But what about the issue of the human body? A very seriously thought about idea around the issues of needing space, food, processes to deal with waste, and the issue of mental stability was essentially to put humans to sleep. More scientifically, the exact state humans would be put in is called stasis. Stasis in this context means an inactive, low metabolic torpor state for mission transit phases. A company called Spaceworks Engineering is working on this very thing with funding from NASA. The cool thing about this technology is that there really isn't too much holding us back from really using it. Already, doctors will put patients with traumatic injuries into something called therapeutic hypothermia, which is very similar. In a simple explanation, doctors will use multiple different methods to cool the body down to 5 degrees Celsius, which lowers the metabolic rate by 50 to 70%. This gives the patients a few days to recover in a low-risk state. No drugs are involved, and there are non-invasive options to create the effect. Now, this technology isn't exactly Futurama where Fry is in stasis for 1,000 years, and humans are not animals that hibernate, so we don't really know how the body will hold up in long-term stasis. However, the lack of information is really just because there hasn't been much research on the process, meaning we can be optimistic as we don't have much to tell us not to yet. Even so, if we aren't able to perform long-term stasis, putting passengers asleep for a few days at a time would decrease the resources needed drastically. Spaceworks has even stated that they're seeing some research that suggests we can put humans into hibernation for up to two weeks. These are just a few of the technologies being looked at to solve some of the issues of long-distance space travel. There are even more going on right now that are bringing the day our civilization hits the stars ever closer. So when that day comes, where do we go? The obvious answer to this is our close neighbor Mars, which will also likely begin with a moon base. Still within our solar system, scientists are looking closely at the conditions on some of the major moons that orbit Saturn and Jupiter. In the Jovian moon system, the Artemis project looked critically at stationing scientists in igloos on the moon Europa. Europa is considered one of the more habitable environments in our solar system. Aside from that, NASA created a research study called HOPE, or Human Outer Planet Exploration, and targeted Callisto due to its much safer distance from Jupiter's harmful radiation. Ganymede has also been considered a target. 
Moving on to the moons of Saturn, we have perhaps one of the most famous moons in the solar system, Titan. This moon has been a serious candidate for possible colonization given its ice water and methane oceans. Also in the Saturn moon system is Enceladus. It is a small icy moon that orbits close to its parent planet, and if it can be proven to contain liquid water, it would be right up there with Europa and Titan as serious contenders for not only future colonization, but also pre-existing life. Now let's move outside our solar system. The recently discovered TRAPPIST-1 planetary system is widely regarded as our best bet of finding and sustaining life outside our solar system. Specifically the fourth planet from the system's sun, TRAPPIST-1e is said to be the most akin to Earth conditions. Also, earlier in the video, we talked about Proxima b being an already looked at target for a probe flyby. Proxima b is said to be in the habitable zone from its star, Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is our closest star neighbor. This means Proxima b could be a very good candidate for human travel as well, in the far future of course. So what are our next steps? According to the European Space Agency, a permanent lunar colony on our own moon would be the next step to the next step, which would be colonizing Mars. A feat which nowadays actually seems like a very realistic goal. Piero Messina of the ESA said that we should aim to have a permanent setup on the moon by the end of the next decade, even if that presence is purely robotic. There may even be a push to make that happen sooner than later, as the International Space Station orbiting Earth currently is due to be decommissioned as of 2024. The Russian Space Agency and NASA have already signed an agreement to cooperate on building a station. But we can't forget the company that has brought so much public interest back into space travel, SpaceX, which is still working on plans to send people to colonize Mars. Earlier in the video, we also mentioned plans to send probes outside of our solar system in the near future, and that in itself is intergalactic space travel. But perhaps one of the most exciting things of all is the success we have already seen from Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, check out my last video, Can Humans Teleport? Also, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos on all things science and science fiction.